Which academy is the best in the world? Is it Barcelona's La Masia? Is it Ajax Amsterdam and the countless amount of players that they produce from that academy? In Africa, on our continent, there's no doubt about which academy has been the most prolific, and that's the branches of the JMG academies, the Jean-Marc Guillot academies. I mean, think about the golden generation of the Ivory Coast, players like Aruna Dindan, Gervinho, Colo and Yaya Toure, uh, Didier Zokora, all of these players came from the Mimo Sivcom uh, Academy, which was linked to the Ivorian club Asik Mimosa, which was run by the JMG Academies, the Jean-Marc Guillot Academies. La technique, tout ce que j'ai aujourd'hui, c'est grâce à la à l'académie que j'ai j'ai toutes ces qualités là. En plus de ça, ils ont il y a l'étude aussi qui compte aussi. Il n'y a pas que le foot. Uh, think about in Algeria, all the recent players that Algeria has been producing and sending to Europe. Players like Rami Ben Sabaini, who currently plays at Borussia Mönchengladbach. Players like Hisham Boudaoui at Nice. Adam Zorgan at Charleroi. Youssef Attal also at Nice. These are all players that have come from the Paradou Academy, which again is being was being operated by the Jean-Marc Guillaume Academies, the JMG Academies. And Mali, Amadou Diawara, Diadje Samaseku, uh, Adama Traore, Hamari Traore, the, the right back and the captain. So many great talents have been produced by the JMG Academies. So really the goal of this video is to see what is the JMG Academy method? How are they able to produce so much talent wherever they go, whether it's the Ivory Coast, Mali, or Algeria? So Jean-Marc Guillou began his career as a player and then a player coach and eventually uh, just a coach. And he bounced around from you know, some smaller clubs in France. And uh, one of the clubs that he ended up at was Cannes in the early 1980s. And it was there that he actually gave Arsene Wenger his very first break in coaching in France. Um, so that's one very important relationship that really led to a breakthrough in Jean-Marc Guyot's career and Arsene Wenger's career as well. And the other being that Jean-Marc Guyot signed an Ivorian player by the name of Yusuf Fofana, a very, very good uh, attacking player, left-footed, and he really impressed Guyou and Wenger as well. And so after a while, uh, he slowly found himself going more into formation and development and academies and less into tactics and winning uh, a match and, and, you know, three points and, and all of that. And as he started to experiment with, you know, youth coaching, development, academies, he realized that in France and in Europe, things were very much regimented, things were pretty much lockdown. They had a routine set way of doing things and they weren't going to change. And Yusuf Afano was Ivorian. So he thought, what if I go back to Cote d'Ivoire and try to find other talent like Yusuf Afano? And that's exactly what he did. Uh, he went to Asak Mimosa, which is Cote d'Ivoire, one of Cote d'Ivoire's biggest clubs. Um, and he was, you know, given a parcel of land, uh, Sol Beni, the, the club, Asak Mimosa were the initial investors. Um, and from there, he, he created the Mimo Sivcom Academy, which again, produced players like the, the Kolo Toure, the, the Yaya Toure, Emmanuel Abue, Didier Zakora, Aruna Dinden, really the, the part Bakari Kon, Ivorian golden generation of the mid 2000s, uh, into the, really until they won the African Cup of Nations in 2015. And so when I say he found talent and he saw talent in Yusuf Afana, how does Jean-Marc Guyot define talent? Jean-Marc Guyot defines talent as three things, really. Uh, technique, tactics, physique, and then he, there's a coefficient that he has. And the coefficient is really mentality. It's morale, mentality, motivation. Uh, you know, he says if a player has those three things and then has a coefficient of zero, then they're a horrible player. If they have those two things, they have coefficient of seven, then they become, you know, world class. So what, what are what are these things? What is technique? What is tactics? What is physique? Technique for Jean-Marc Guyou is the relationship between the player and the ball. La technique, je l'ai dit, c'est le ballon et le joueur. Donc, ce que fait un joueur avec le ballon, est-ce qu'il est capable de bien le contrôler? Est-ce qu'il est capable de faire une bonne passe? Est-ce qu'il est capable de bien le conduire? Est -ce est capable de bien frapper? How do they develop that technique? The first thing they do, dynamic juggling. So uh, every, day, every day when the kids go to training, again, they train twice a day. Every day, the first 20 minutes and the last 20 minutes of training are with these dynamic juggling exercises. So I'll give you an example of what he calls level one. Level one will be uh, juggling with your right foot or your left foot uh, 100 meters and you have to do it uh, uh, within a minute. You know, uh, 100 meters, the ball doesn't touch the ground, go ahead. Once you do that, he says some kids, it takes them three months, some kids, it takes them nine months. Uh, everybody's always uh, graded and that's always kept on file. But once you do that, they'll say, okay, now you have to do 
uh, with your head a little bit faster and then or maybe uh, shoulder head shoulder shoulder head shoulder back and forth like this and always faster and then zigzags and it gets to a point where he asks you to do it within 22 seconds 100 meters within 22 seconds both knees he says this is from him like this is the supreme exercise because he thinks that if you can juggle with both knees 22 seconds 100 meters he thinks then you're unstoppable he said how can the opposing players stop you they have to foul you you have to either score or or ends up with a penalty because uh, a player can't the opposing player can't raise their foot above your knee because it's automatically a foul so that just gives you idea about the dynamic technical exercises they do at the jmg academy uh, tactics is the, the relationship between the player and other players on the pitch it's a spatial relationship it's uh, how do I manipulate space to not only uh, recover the ball when we lose possession, but then hold on to the ball when we have possession. He's very much Guardiola-esque in that he always wants to retain the possession and wants to recover it as soon as possible when he loses possession. The tactique for a player is the art of making the right choices in the game. If you see a player who makes the right choices, that is the choices that serve the interests of the team, either to mark, or to defend, c'est-à-dire sauver ou sauvegarder le, la possibilité d'avoir un, un but. Donc les bons choix dans le jeu, c'est la tactique. Ça, vous êtes obligé de le juger dans le jeu. Uh, how do they train tactics? Tactics are, um, he says, fairly simple. You're basically playing mini games. So you'll play three versus three, six versus six, nine versus nine. And when you play those mini games, uh, you're basically recreating this, the situations that the player is going to have on the on a full size pitch, but they're confronted with those situations on a more uh, common occurrence. And so he'll he'll make those mini matches. He'll play them in the mini matches, uh, and then they'll also do odd situations. So uh, two versus three, six versus four, and that'll force you know a defender to learn how to defend when they have when they're at a disadvantage, and vice versa for a, a striker. They'll learn how to attack when they're at an advantage or a disadvantage as well. Um, they also play uh, with no goalkeeper uh, at the very young ages, you know, between 12, 13, 14, 15. And he says this is because, you know, attacking players can make a difference on their own, but a team that defends well has to defend with, you know, all 11 players and they, they have to have that generosity of spirit. So uh, they begin by defending with no goalkeeper and that really forces all 10 players or 11 players in this case to rely on one another, to defend as a team, to make an effort, to not let the opposition get in your final third of the pitch. And that also develops the, the tactical mind a little bit for, for Jean-Marc Guillou. And physique, he says, is mostly God-given. He said you can usually look at you know a player's parents and their genes. And, uh, and also you can obviously work on it. And, and they work on it very hard. They, they train two times a day at all GMG academies, um, including, you know, uh, musculation, like um, physical exercise. But he does concede that that is often uh, mostly genetic. And besides the no goalkeeper, another thing that catches people's eyes when they see a JMG academy play is that they play barefoot. And this is, uh, I don't know, for me, it's, a, it's an idiosyncrasy. It's one of those particularities of the JMG academy. Jean-Marc Guillou is convinced that this helps players develop technique faster and it also helps players make decisions faster. Um, there's obviously disagreements about this. Can you run faster with shoes than you do without shoes? He says that whenever they played tournaments and he put two teams, one with shoes and one barefoot, the barefoot uh, teams always won. And he also says, what are you know Nike and Adidas and other shoe brands always trying to do? They're trying to reduce the weight of the shoe to make it feel more like uh, like you're wearing nothing, and he says barefoot is the best way to go. Arsene Wenger also uh, believes this. So, c'est le meilleur moyen d'avoir uh, de former une une technique très juste et très très subtile. It's one of those things that I, I me personally, I think it's more of a branding uh, thing than it is, uh, you know, an essential developmental tool. But that's another mark of the JMG Academies that I think is really cool.